one should be doubly well informed. <laughs> Special? You're cute. Where goes that folk? You guys are slipping down. Come come, little girl. You say she called herself a farmer? No, she's built. Thank you. Is there enough for others? and welcome to meeting number four of 1990-1991. We'll have the roll call, please, by the town clerk. Chairman Cogso. Here. Councilor Amaro. Here. Councilor Creelman. Here. Councilor Jordan. Yep. Councilor McLaughlin. Here. Councilor Pearson. Here. Councilor Reed. Here. Minutes of the meeting number three, July 9th, 1990. Are there any additions or corrections? Madam Chair. I, <coughs> I move approval of the minutes as written. Second. All in favor? The next item on the agenda would be um, items that citizen discussion of items not on the agenda. Is there anyone who wishes to step forth to discuss an item? There being none, we'll move on to the next item. Reports and correspondence. Are there any reports or correspondence from the town council? Madam Chair. Uh, I'd just like to say that on uh, July 19th, uh, town manager Michael Governor and myself attended a meeting of the regional waste systems uh, at which they changed the uh, guard, if you will, from Robert Yanley, who managed that for four years, to Irv Bickford. And he gave a report, very upbeat, regional waste systems is moving ahead with a greater effort at recycling, uh, which we're involved in, and I'm sure we've got a report on that coming up a little later as far as the anticipated arrival of uh, uh, recycling bins and whatnot up at the transfer station. Also, they recognized past Councilor Lester Jordan for his work on the demolition committee, 
and they appointed him to the Finance Committee. And one other thing, since you weren't able to go, they had these lovely t-shirts. And this one I thought was your color. Thank you. <laughs> they got them in terrible color. You mean you didn't have one too? I did, but I couldn't have one tonight. Oh, I have a presentation. Thank you very much. Any other reports and correspondence? That's what I know. Uh, uh, just two uh, uh, con congratulatory messages, I guess, I would like to, uh, to bring tonight. First of all, congratulations to Councilor Bill Jordan, who is being honored by the Greater Portland Chamber of Commerce as this year's outstanding public uh, rep representative of the public sector. Uh, it's a great honor. Bill has served for many, many years uh, in Cape Elizabeth and, and has served the region really well. So. I, I, I wanted to extend congratulations from the council. And also uh, congratulations to our town manager, Mike McGovern, who has been uh, elected to the, uh, well, has been nominated to the uh, Maine Municipal Association's Executive Committee. Uh, and those nominations are pretty, uh, are usually pretty much automatic. I would expect in October that he would be elected to that prestigious committee. So congratulations to both of you. Thank you. Yes. Any other reports or correspondence? Mrs. Pizzo. I just wanted to report to the council. I did receive a petition today that was circulated um, by a citizens committee. We received approximately 980 signatures. These uh, signatures will be forwarded to the Board of Voter Registration for certification. It is the hopes that at your September meeting this petition will be on the council agenda. The petition is in regard to a charter amendment to increase the school board membership from five to seven members. Council yes, Madam Chairman, I'd like to commend the efforts of the citizens group who worked so hard to uh, attain the signatures and hope that they have learned a lot and continue to stay involved in the affairs of Cape Elizabeth's town management government. Thank you. Any other comments? Well, since we were discussing achievements um, tonight, Councillor um, Jordan's achievement, I'd like to continue that theme with some special presentations of achievements. <clears throat> Will John Anderson, Brian O'Donnell, Jimmy Wilson, and Keith Page please come over to the podium? These young men are our veteran um, camera crew. They have been with Cape Elizabeth um, Television almost since its inception and have really developed a skill that helps to put us in the homes of the citizens. So we have a little plaque to thank them all for their special efforts and we hope they'll continue helping us. Keith? Thank you. Jimmy? <coughs> we have to arrange our order here. There we go. Congratulations. Brian, you're welcome. I'm sorry it's not the buffet you boys hoped for, but <laughs> this is much more lasting. <laughs> and the next achievement goes to the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust. One of the priorities of the town council and the town has been acquisition of land for open space and for our green belt. The town pledged $50,000 from its um, land acquisition account if the land trust could raise the balance for purchasing almost five acres along Great Pond. Would Nat Clifford, the chairman of the Cape Elizabeth Land Trust, come forward, please? I'd like to uh, present to you a token check for the $50,000 from the town. <laughs> I'm glad that so many of the town citizens chose to uh, come out tonight and uh, applaud the success of this joint venture. <laughs> and quite seriously, I'm very happy to have been uh, a part of this along with our membership. I believe that the success of this uh, fundraising and, and acquisition demonstrates a, a cooperative relationship between the town and the land trust that will certainly benefit our citizens for many, many years to come. 
As agreed in our um, commitment from the Town Council, I'm also happy to present you with the easement on the land, which now means that the Town will hold an easement over land which the Conservation, I mean, sorry, the Land Trust owns, and again, ensuring uh, the uh, preservation of this property in perpetuity. Thank you very Thank much. You. The next item on the agenda is the public hearing as to whether or not the police should be participating in a deer reduction program. And since I have a feeling that's why most of you are here, I think it would be beneficial to us all if we lay down some ground rules before we begin. <clears throat> we have present uh, with us very happy. from the police force, Captain yep. Ed Tol Tolman, Tolman, sorry. Also from the um, regional wildlife biologist, <coughs> Phil Bosenhart and from the Maine Department of Field and Wildlife Safety Officer, Gary Anderson. I'm going to ask them to give basically background information on this project. Um, then we will, um, dis we will allow comments pro and comments con to this proposal. I'm going to try to give you all an equal amount of time. Hopefully we can limit it to 30 minutes each. I ask that you pose your questions and we will give the um, police office and the uh, wildlife officials time to respond following all of the questioning. I ask also that you try to limit your comments to three minutes and that, in, and that you also not keep repeating the same message. If you want to come forward and announce that you are in support or against, that is fine but let's not drag this out by having constant repetition of, of information. So if um, Captain Toll would like to come forward. Madam Chairman. Yes, Mr. If, Councilor Jordan. Before you start this public hearing, uh, it's been the feeling of some people and myself that there's a possibility that I have a conflict of interest here because the deer kind of chomp away at my livelihood that I wish to ask the council that I'll step down from the public hearing and the item 40 that's on the agenda. How feels the council? All those in favor? Your excuse, yeah. Councilor Jordan. <coughs> Essentially what is being proposed is a cooperative effort between the state, the town, and private landowners of Cape Elizabeth. The population of the white-tailed deer within the boundaries of Cape Elizabeth has grown to the point where it has become a nuisance to the health and safety of the inhabitants and visitors of the community, as well as becoming a threat to the success and health of the herd itself. The size of the herd has created a serious situation of overgrazing, which has resulted in animals foraging on commercial properties, damaging shrubs, trees, bushes, crops, and plantings. Last year, over $37,000 in property damage caused by deer was reported. Nearly 15% of all motor vehicle accidents in Cape Elizabeth involve or are caused by deer, which has resulted in over $48,000 of property damage and a threat of serious bodily injury to motor vehicle operators and passengers in the last three years. There were 31 car deer accidents in Cape Elizabeth in 1989 alone. By comparison, statewide statistics indicate that less than 5% of all accidents involve animals of any kind, including dogs, cats, moose, deer, and other wildlife. Additionally, there has been identified an infestation of the so-called deer tick among this herd, which has been recognized as having caused Lyme disease, a debilitating and potentially fatal human illness. Herd reduction through predata predation and seasonal mortality has decreased over the past few years, with milder winters being predicted and fewer dogs and natural predators roaming about. This trend is expected to continue. It was professionally estimated in 1979 by a regional wildlife biologist that certain acreages in Cape Elizabeth were habitat to 91 to 123 white-tailed deer per square mile, when the state average was 15 to 20 deer per square mile. The methods previously employed to reduce the size of the herd include live trapping, tranquilizing, transplanting have not worked. Similarly, sterilizing and other birth control has proven ineffective 
or objectionable in other parts of New England and is not considered to be a viable alternative here. In an effort to mitigate the problems formally described, biologists and other experts from the State Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife predict that it would be necessary to remove 75 to 100 deer per year in addition to those eliminated through predictable mortality, predictable mortality from motor vehicle accidents, predation, and depredation permits to arrive at and sustain a deer population of less than 50 deer per square mile in marginally developed and open areas of Cape Elizabeth. <coughs> it's important to note that carrying capacity of the similar land environments in the state is about 20 deer per square mile. Therefore, the depredation permit expansion program is being undertaken. The purpose of the organizational body is considering the following recommendations is to allow for improved coordination and communication between the major landowners, commercial growers, Maine Department of Inland Fish and Wildlife, and other entities that may contribute to the overall success of the depredation permit expansion program. The depredation expansion, progr expansion program is a product of the state of Maine. Any harvesting activity or other methods of deer population reduction is to be approved, sanctioned, and authorized by the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife. The Town of Cape Elizabeth will cooperate with this effort by assisting the Maine Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife in administering, monitoring, and regulating the project. The Town of Cape Elizabeth is to be held harmless throughout the planning and implementation of the Deprimation Permit Expansion Program or activity and at any other time of that fact. The town being in cooperation with participating landowners in the state of Maine with regards to this effort. In summary, we have an increasing problem with the deer population in Cape Elizabeth. Unchecked, the problems of overpopulation and overgrazing will continue to larger amounts of property damage, the potential for serious injuries to motor vehicle drivers and passengers, and an increase in the deer tick infestation and a generally less healthy herd of deer that predictably will become victims of disease and starvation. Through the recommendations I have outlined, the Depredation Permit Expansion Program proposes safe, efficient, and beneficial methods for herd reduction that result in a healthier, more manageable resource that is better able to coexist with the community. And also I'd like to add that this is nothing new in Cape Elizabeth. There's bow hunting has been allowed in this town for years. The only change is in the amount of deer that would be allowed to be taken under the permit. The hunt will take place in the regular time span within the existing limits of the regular bow season in the state. There will be no change in that. And I can assure you from the police department's standpoint that it will be strictly enforced. Any violations of state laws, town violations, town ordinances, excuse me, or permits will be strictly enforced and dealt with accordingly. Thank you. <coughs> Is there any comment from the gentleman from the state? I don't think so. I think it's summed up. Thank you. Now we'll open for the public hearing. Who would like to come forth? Has, who has a statement and would like to come forth? If you would come to the microphone, please, give us your name and address. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Lynn Pulis. I'm from Gardner, Maine. And uh, while there has been some mention that the people, there are people opposing the deer, um, proposed deer hunt come from out of town, I'm s quite suspicious that a great number of the applicants for deer hunting permits also come from out of town. The proposed archery season on deer this fall needs additional, more careful consideration. First, it's unrealistic to suppose that killing half the deer will solve the problem. The surviving animals will not just go away, they'll be around next spring and precisely the same problems will occur. Even if you kill, or even if all the deer in Cape Elizabeth are killed, it would be not solve the problem because more deer will migrate into the area and the crop damage will continue. We'll be here again next year, same problem. We asked the University of Vermont professor David H. Hirth of the Wildlife and Fisheries Biology Department about the proposed archery hunt as a solution. He responded that the deer's productivity will probably increase in response to the population reduction. In other words, the surviving deer will have greater numbers of offspring. Furthermore, their population will quickly rebound 
following any control efforts, so annual hunts would be inevitable. In 1988, the Illinois Department of Conservation reported, bow hunting has never ha been an effective tool for deer control. A Texas Parks and Wildlife biologist states, you cannot call bow hunting a population control measure. It is a recreational pursuit. We do not advocate bow hunting when the objective, objective is controlling the population. It has come as quite a surprise to many people to learn that dozens of deer are shot with firearms every year in Cape Elizabeth by property owners with special permits from the state. Obviously, that has not solved the problem either. There are effective non-lethal solutions, including repellents, guarding dogs, and fences, and we have a list for anyone who's interested. The best protection, of course, is an electric fence. And at present, a joint federal and state program will provide materials and instructions free of charge to commercial farmers. All they need to do is erect the fence and maintain it. And there are other problems with bow hunting. In 1987, the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department formally addressed these other concerns and identified them as ethical, moral, and humane issues. The public has been led to believe that bow hunting is an effective, humane means of wildlife population control, despite long-standing claims to the contrary by humane groups and even some individual bow hunters. Now wildlife biologists throughout the country are acknowledging and confirming that crippling rates of arrow-wounded animals are indeed appallingly high. A 1987 report by the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department sets forth the results of an in-depth study on wounding losses over a 14-year period. The data was derived from over 3,500 interviews with bow hunters. The report states that, quote, for every deer legally bagged with bow and arrow, at least one more is hit and not retrieved. This is a wounding rate of over 50%, compared with a firearms wounding rate of 7%. In one wildlife management area, 101 bow hunters fired 86 arrows, seriously wounding 11 deer and killing not one. The public has been told that bow hunters who participate in next fall's archery season will be tested for proficiency. However, the Texas study reports that there is evidence to indicate that experienced bow hunters wound more deer than neophytes because they get more shots and therefore have opportunity to wound. Confirming this is an Iowa study on arrow wounded deer which states, quote, crippling is not correctable by increased training or field experience and is a byproduct of the sport. While not all wounded deer die, many do finally succumb to infections and most abdominally shot deer suffer a slow death from peritonitis, a kind of gangrene. Veterinarians confirm that arrow wounded deer and other animals can take hours, days, and even weeks to die. When a Maine bow hunter tracks down a wounded deer, by state law, he cannot use a firearm to put the animal out of its misery. He must kill it with another arrow, or a knife, or a club. Every state prohibits use of a 22 rifle, hunting big game because of their inadequate killing power. Yet 22s are far more lethal both in accuracy and killing power than bows and arrows. Deer hunter and former bow hunter Adrian Benke has written a book entitled the bow hunting alternative. In it, he charges that, quote, archery wounding is the most denied problem in bow hunting and the most ignored problem in wildlife science. In the August 1990 issue of Deer and Deer Hunting Magazine, written by hunters for hunters, an editorial reveals that in many parts of the world, in Western Europe, for example, bow hunting is prohibited. The same issue fish, uh, features a review of Mr. Banke's 1989 book. The reviewer urges every bow hunter to read it, adding that, quote, studies indicate that for every deer killed by a bow hunter, at least an equal number are wounded, escaping to suffer, and in many cases die. No ethical sportsman, no individual who respects the white-tailed deer can find such numbers acceptable. I'll leave with you a copy of Mr. Banke's book along with the magazine articles and the Texas report. Finally, damage caused by too many deer isn't unique to Cape Elizabeth. Deer problems have been reported in much, much less developed areas of Maine. Cherryfield, Machias, Columbia, Centerville, Penobscot. While fences and repellents offer a quick fix, there are long-range solutions which should be implemented as well. 
First, we would urge the Maine Inland Fisheries and Wildlife Department to reassess its stated intent of increasing the deer herd to 300,000 animals from the present 250,000. Second, elected state officials should be informed of deer overpopulation problems so they do not legislate another bounty on coyotes. And law permitting night, laws permitting night hunting and snaring of coyotes should be repealed. Natural predation helps control deer numbers and ultimately the most fit deer will survive to strengthen the gene pool. Third, why not try some innovative approaches such as live trapping and fertility control agents? We also want to leave with you this evening a video that gives clear evidence of the suffering inflicted on animals during bow hunts. Target animals are seen to suffer obvious pain and in every instance the animals react violently. Mrs. Cullen, I think we've gone over well I over the three I minutes. I just have one more statement and then I, I promise it's very brief and that is that the state of California last week prohibited the use of bows and arrows on bears and um, a lot of their decision was based on Mr. Benke's book. Thank you Thank for you. your patience. Yes. <clears throat> sure. Do you have an address if we want to turn it to you? It is. Okay. My name is Henry Adams, and I'm a resident of the town of Cape Elizabeth. And I stand here in opposition to the proposed bow hunt. The town, through its policies, let developers invade this community. They overran the habitat of the new Elizabeth Farms on the west, to the new development in Broad Cove on the south, to Dyer Brook on the east, to Stonegate on the north, in what I personally call the rape of Cape Elizabeth. The deer were forced to move, and now the town wants to further exacerbate the problem of development by killing off the deer that had to wander elsewhere. I find this solution absolutely repugnant. And then the landowners want to reserve the right to invite their friends in to bow hunt for three deer each. This is abhorrent to my sense of values. To kill these deer that have lost their habitat to development pressures is morally wrong. And I hope that you people will not vote in the affirmative tonight because I want to continue my confidence in your thought process. Thank you. Anyone else? If those who wish to speak, perhaps we could form a little line on the side, it might expedite the public part of the hearing. Well, I'm not ready to speak. I'd like to have another half an hour to get my thoughts together, but I think I've got more than three minutes. I'm Ken Maxwell, one of the notorious farmers <coughs> in the town, and certainly I'm here to speak in favor of this. We are asking so very little from you. Uh, the bow hunting has gone on for years, uh, unnoticed perhaps, but it's been gone on and all is, uh, the ch captain has said, we are asking you to allow uh, up to three more deer by the proficient bow hunters who are capable of taking that. I'd like to comment out of order here to Mr. Adams' uh, statement. I know that may not be proper, but I think you'll find that the deer love the town of Cape Elizabeth. They have loved it not only back when there was three or four farmers uh, and that was all that was in the town, but they love it today. They love the development, they love the houses, they love the shrubs, and I don't believe that the development is causing them to crowd into my area. Now I'll grant you there's only two or three farmers left to feed them, so I'm feeling the pinch a little more and that's not being shared by some others. But the dear love of a town the actions that you have taken in corralling dogs, uh, stopping firearms, and these type of things, the deer are very comfortable wandering around your backyards, your lawns, all of these type of things. They are absolutely safe. Talk about repellent. Years ago, the smell of a human was the greatest repellent to a wild animal such as that. They love your smell right now. I don't know what kind of perfume you use, but they are absolutely not afraid of it whatsoever. So I do not believe, well, I, I'm, I can't say I'm happy with all the development in the town, but I will not accept that as a reason for a deer problem. So that was a little uh, quick uh, at the beginning. 
I will say that if you allow this, I've, I've been in on it since the beginning, and I'm very pleased with Chief Pickering's professional way of handling it, uh, rolling with the punches, uh, uh, and he's going to stay on top of this no matter what happens. He will be on top of this with his manpower, and so it will be controlled as it is designed, as it is intended, and if you allow it, it will certainly be reevaluated at the end of the year to determine if there were any mistakes or any improvements that could be done. I'm not an expert in this matter, but farming for the past few years, it's been merely the last seven to ten years that deer have bothered me. Now, that isn't the beginning of it in the town, but it's been bothering me. Now, I have tried blood meal, coyote urine, pounds and pounds of soap, human hair, a generator that would light my field bright as day all night long, even sleeping in the fields to try to protect my carrot fields. All of this to absolutely no avail. They every time has won out. This year I spent $2,000 to install a very professional deer fence. I don't know about this freebie stuff. I have not seen Governor McKernan or uh, the other Democrats up there in the, car in the legislature offering me any free stuff right now. But I spent $2,000 to surround an acre or so of carrots to keep the deer off, primarily so I can sleep a little this summer without really thinking that my carrots are being devoured. There's no way I can pay for that fence on that carrot field. There's absolutely no way. But it's an attempt. I'm not a vicious person. I am trying. But I've come to my wit's end as far as this goes. Now, I don't know whether George Chase is here or not, is he? He was involved in this. He's a retired warden now. He's, he's out of this headache. But two meetings ago, I asked him what would happen if we did nothing. Nothing. And he said it would be the end of the town as we know it now. Now, somebody may want to correct me, because that may not be his word, but he says it will be the end of commercial farming as we know it, the accidents, the property damage, these type of things are going to increase, the, the concern of Lyme disease and these type of things. If nothing is done, he says the town is in trouble. Now, maybe someone want to change that a little bit of adjust it. I wished I could have copied it word for word, because he's the professional in this. He has been harassed by this deer problem tremendously. Those who are opposed to the bow hunting, I would suggest to you, are opposed to the attempt to discomfort these deer in any way. They're going to say that there are other means there are other simple means, there are other means that are so simple that we, they're just there, repellents and such things as that. I'm not a bow hunter fan at all, but something has got to be done. I don't think you want to have 3030s ringing around your town at night, rattling your windows with rifle bullets. But this, as it's lined up, is a very simple attempt to try to eliminate a few more of this. There are those here, and God bless them, that really believe that Bambi is still alive, and if we would, if the humans would leave the deer alone, they would live happily ever after. Thank you, Mr. Maxwell. Now, we know that's not true. Good evening. My name is Herb Dobbins. I am a resident of Wyndham. I thank you for allowing outsiders to speak tonight, and I speak to you as president of the Maine Bowhunters Association. You have heard some, uh, some statements here tonight about studies done. I would uh, also say that studies in Missouri, New Jersey, and New York have found bow hunting to be an effective and humane hunting system. If we look at the situation with the deer in Cape Elizabeth, what are the alternatives to hunting? One is starvation. Has anyone in this room gone without eating for a week? And then would you like to stand up and talk about the merits of starving? 
Animals in this condition, an unhealthy condition, then become very susceptible to disease. And because the entire herd is in a state of poor nutrition, the disease would very quickly ravage the herd. We've heard about natural predation. If anyone is familiar with the natural predation, many times the animal is taken down and the consumption of that animal is begun while the deer is still alive. I do not call this humane. The idea of road kills have already been cited here tonight, except for one thing. With the majority of your speed limits here in Cape Elizabeth, it would not be a road kill. The deer would crawl off, hop off somewhere out into the surrounding roadside, maybe not to be found. Then internal injuries, internal bleeding and so forth, would lead to a very, very unfortunate demise of that creature. The idea of hunting in general. In Arizona, on the Kaibab Plateau, hunting was, was outlawed there. The Gunnison deer in Colorado, <coughs> same situation. And more recently, the Great Swamp in New Jersey, hunting was outlawed. What happened was, as has been said, the deer herd increased tremendously. As a matter of fact, two healthy deer with no predation in seven years can produce a herd of 40. Not 40 healthy deer by any means. But in every one of these cases that I cited, hunting was reinstituted as a means of natural control of these animals. The unfortunate part was that in Arizona, so much habitat destruction had been done at that time, it took 18 years for the, for the habitat to recover so that a deer herd could be reinstituted. As far as the wounding of deer, I won't cite national statistics. I will cite the statistics that the Maine Bowhunters Association has kept since its inception. The average length of shot for one of our hunters is 13 to 16 yards. That is very close. I can speak for my organization and say that bow hunters do not take haphazard shots. We school them very carefully in that. We have an educational program which stresses the essence of a good, clean shot. And the great majority of our hunters who loose an arrow recover their deer. If I may state, because a lot has been made about the inhumanity of bow hunting, this statement is from Dr. Bruce Stringer, who is a veterinarian with the Rio Grande Zoological Park. He explains how an arrow works. Careful dissection shows a rupturing of small vessels up to 15 centimeters around the primary wound. This could only be caused by shock. Shock produces a numbing effect, and the razor-sharp broadhead probably causes little more discomfort than a shaving accident. As blood loss occurs, a near painless death follows. Instinct makes the animal run, not pain. Often, the uninformed tend to humanize animals and put themselves in the place of the hunted. Animals apparently do not have knowledge of death and are not concerned about it. Thank you, Mr. Dobbins. <laughs> Is there anyone else who'd like to come forward? My name is Grace Trafaro, and I live in South Portland, quite close to Cape Elizabeth. I'm here to oppose the bow hunting because I feel it, it concerns all of us um, in Cape Elizabeth and out, outside of Cape Elizabeth because if the bow hunting does pass, it will set precedent for other towns. While non-lethal methods of deterring deer from grazing on farmers' crops exist, such as slanted electrified fencing, which the state, inland wildlife and fishery can help pay or loan to farmers, or which can be written off as a business expense, while others, such as Brunswick Naval Station and Swan Island, have used fencing to deter, to deter deer and have found it very effective, 
While the population of deer has been dwindling since 1979, the peak year for population, contrary to the first gentleman who spoke and said it has been increasing, and increased development has been pushing deer out of their natural habitat, while natural predators of deer, such as coyote, are being hunted, and we, the taxpayers, pay for this bounty, while bow hunting is ineffective because deer will continue to nibble the crops in the spring, while the deer will suffer after they are, ki are shot at and uh, wounded, despite what the previous man has stated, Animals do feel pain, they do suffer, and I um, encourage you to watch the video that we have uh, given you, and you will actually see the animal in slow motion, screaming and dying painfully. It would be unfortunate for Cape Elizabeth residents to choose a violent and consequently deadly solution for a problem which can be resolved non-lethally. The solution of using pain and death is by all means the worst example you can give your children in a town which values its education. Thank you. Hi, um, my name is Dorothy Stoddard, and I am a resident of Cape Elizabeth. I have a horse farm off of Old Ocean House Road, and I am absolutely opposed to this. I think that bow hunting in this town is nothing more than a slaughter. I think that um, but the deer are very tame. There are a lot of, there's a lot of meadow land. We have a lot of development. The deer are very visible. It is nothing more. You could just get out of your car, take the bow. And I don't even think you'd have to shoot them. You could knock them over the head. It is just not hunting. It's not. And I think, I mean, I, I appreciate the main tradition of hunting and I appreciate the bow hunting tradition. And my husband is a bow hunter, and he goes to northern Maine to bow hunt. Um, I think Mr. I, I appreciate Mr. Maxwell's problem, and I appreciate the farmer's problems. But the fact of the matter is that these people are very, very wealthy. They have millions of dollars worth of land. I think sixty, seventy thousand dollars of crop damage is a very small price to pay. And I don't think that the farmers of the Cape own these deer. I think the people of the Cape own the animals of the Cape. Well, they don't own animals. Thank you. My name's Laura Moore and I live on Sawyer Road. I'm a neighbor of Young, I'm a neighbor of Maxwell, and I'm very opposed to this. The simple fact is I have a garden. It's not a commercial garden, but my garden's producing very well. And all we have protecting it is a simple little rope with grade sticks. My garden's less than 10 feet from the wooded area where the deer come, and I enjoy looking at them at night. My kid, tonight, my little girl says, Mommy, where are you going? And I told her what they wanted to do. And she's upset at this. Maybe Bambi is alive for her. And another thing is, you say they like our perfume. What about the Sprague Farm? 15 years ago, they were allowed to open a sanctuary. Why, why now, after inviting the deer here and saying, you can stay here, you're safe, now they're going to shoot him? I mean, the bow and arrow hunting is ridiculous, and I'm very upset at the town, and I hope you don't let this go through. I have a horse. Who's going to keep him off my land? My land's close to theirs. Who's guaranteeing me that the archers won't roam onto my land and keep the horse off my, their archers off my land? What if my horse gets injured? Who's responsible for my horse? That's all I have to say. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Seal Simpson. I'm a Cape Elizabeth <clears throat> resident, and I'm totally opposed to the hunt. Uh, I'm total in support of the farmers. I'm a vegetarian of 20 years, and I'm dependent on the farmers for their crops. I can appreciate the position that they're in, but it just seems to me there's a better way, and I think many better ways have been described here tonight, and I stand opposed. Good evening. I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words. I'm David Smart. I live in Cape Elizabeth. 
Uh, I am a bow hunter. I am obviously in favor of the hunt. I realize that, that this, this issue is an emotional issue, uh, especially if, if for those who are opposed to it. I submit that if one agrees with the managed harvesting of wildlife, that they also, and if they are opposed to the managed harvesting of wildlife, then they probably shouldn't eat seafood because that is the managed harvesting of wildlife. Uh, I'd like to respond just quickly to some of the comments I've heard tonight. Uh, one, it's like stepping out of the car and hitting them with a rock. If that is true, why have there only been 15 deer per season taken by 50 bow hunters? Uh, another is some of the uh, reports from Texas. I submit that the terrain in the town of Cape Elizabeth is vastly different. Uh, Texas, if you've been there, is open. Uh, I've been somewhat successful in bow hunting over, over my career. Uh, I'm a cautious bow hunter, as I think most of us are. I have yet to lose an animal. Uh, my success rate is perhaps a little higher than some. I've taken seven animals over North America, some in the, some in the state of Maine. Uh, a, a statement made uh, on one of the handouts says that we bow hunters cut the throats of animals after we shoot them. Well, uh, perhaps someone does. Uh, none of the fellows I hunt with do that. Uh, I think uh, all I'm asking is that that you treat this issue with logic rather than emotion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smart. My name is Mark James. I represent the Maine Farm Bureau Association. We're a non-governmental, non-partisan organization, a grassroots organization made up of 12 county farm bureaus of which Cumberland County Farm Bureau is, is, is uh, a part of our organization. We have 300 members in Cumberland County. We stand in favor of uh, the bow hunting in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, contrary to the horse farmer at the rear of the room, farmers in Cape Elizabeth are not a rich bunch. Uh, they cannot afford to, to take uh, the steps necessary to fence in their land to avoid deer damage. They have worked with the Department of Inland Fisheries and Wildlife to seek a viable alternative and to have tried other alternatives to seek a solution to the deer problem. Those have failed and as a result they have con in consultation with the Department of Inland Fisheries worked uh, to get support for the bow hunt in case Cape Elizabeth. I thank you for your consideration and I urge your support of, of, this, uh, of this passage. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bill Linnell. I live in Cape Elizabeth. Uh, I'm a hunter. Uh, I'm not a bow hunter uh, because I haven't taken the course yet. Uh, you have to take the course to, to do it. Uh, my opinion of bow hunters is, is high. They're the best hunters I've ever seen. Uh, the gentleman said they get within 13 to 16 yards of a deer, and that sounds, that's about right. Uh, to those who uh, think that it's inhumane to to, to to use a bow, or they seem opposed to hunting in general, uh, I'd ask them what they eat and how does it find uh, its way to your table. Uh, do you eat those burgers at McDonald's? Uh, do you eat veal? Do you eat lamb, ham, bacon, or fish? Lobster? Are you vegans? Are you vegans? Okay. If you. Please, let me speak. Excuse me, let's give him a chance let to me speak. speak. Okay. Uh, do you wear leather shoes? No. Okay, good. Um, okay. If you could just 
confine sure. himself to making a sure. statement and let's not have an exchange. It just okay, fine. It's beyond. Uh, um, if, if, all right, this is a this is a statement I'm reading. I'm not necessarily. It's rhetorical. People don't need to speak. Well, it's difficult in the situation to keep it that okay. way. So I'd appreciate. I think your point's been made. Okay, thank you. Um, now, I, I do believe that uh, a vegan has a has a good point in this. Has, has a, a uh, you know leg to stand on. Uh, they practice what they preach, and I hope that they would allow me to do the same. Uh, my decision not to be a vegetarian was influenced by Ben Franklin's thinking on the same subject. Uh, he was debating whether, he, whether or not to be a vegetarian. Uh, his answer came to him one day when he and a friend were out fishing. Uh, his friend caught a fish, they cleaned it, and they discovered a fish inside the other fish, and he decided if they can eat each other, then he f felt it was all right for, he, for him to eat them also. Um, of course, you know, uh, vegans are, 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 are true vegetarians are few and far between, uh, but whatever their number, as long as they respect my decision to hunt and eat wild game, I will respect their decision not to. After all, uh, was not the desire to practice freedom of choice one of the main reasons that those famous omnivores, the pilgrims, came to America? Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else? Hello, I'm Fred Brown. I'm a resident in Cape Elizabeth here on Fenway Road. And basically, I just had a few questions to bring up. You people <coughs> can decide for yourselves. I am a sportsman. I'm a hunter safety instructor, both with firearm and archery. I'm totally in favor of this hunt. Uh, I do feel that you should really stop to think how long it takes for a deer to die from a car accident or from starvation. You should certainly look at some pictures of deer doings as such. And if you should think that an arrow or a gunshot wound, they die a lot worse, suffer a lot more, you look at those pictures and you'd know. As far as repellents go, I had, I had some beautiful shrubs on my front lawn last year. I called the Fish and Wildlife Department, called the Police Department. They gave me all the suggestions. Even my dog couldn't keep them off my front lawn eating my bushes. I chased them off personally every night. I was tempted to shoot them myself, but I didn't want to get thrown in jail. Uh, the other question, though, that I would like to bring up is whether it is right or wrong to shoot these deer would be how would you like to have your child, boy, girl, or yourself suffer from these increasing car accidents out here at the Cape? And that, I rest my case. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Anyone else? My name is Steve Kuznis. I live in Saco. I used to work at Two Life State Park while I was attending the university. And um, it seems to me that this bow hunt has um, become a self-interest issue. Everyone seems to be interested in protecting their property and their right to hunt. And I feel that the Cape is a little bit more sophisticated. People in the Cape have to live with deer. That's why everyone likes to live at, at the Cape. I loved working here. It's a great place to live. And to live here means dealing with the deer, doing what you can to coexist with these animals. And I feel that the alternatives to hunting are out there. It's going to cost some money. Maybe it is a business write-off of some of these landowners. But I think the character of the Cape would be severely damaged by a reckless bow hunt where they're suffering deer, uh, they're slaughtered, bleeding, etc. I don't think that image belongs here at Cape Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, hello, my name is Maria Seidel, and I'm from Portland, Maine. And I'm sitting here, and I hear all what the adults have to say, and I just want to express an opinion from a 16 year old. Um, I'm, a, I'm opposed to the, to the bow hunting, and I would like you all to continue being open-minded so you can listen to the alternatives, which I hope, which will be put into. Okay, um, I'm really nervous. I'm not used to speaking in front of large groups, but I really want you to listen to what I have to say. 
and um, deers are really beautiful animals, and I never and I haven't even seen one yet, and I'd like to someday. And I understand the farmer's position, but the rate at which we're killing all the animals, um, I just the rate at which we're killing them. I just want them to just be able to live and to not suffer. And um, when you talk about how the deers are starving and how other animals eat other animals, that's how it's supposed to work. Um, the way that the animals dwindle down is by starvation, and it is painful, but that's how it's supposed to work. Animals eat other animals because it's how it's supposed to work. That's how nature works. We're humans, and um, we're, we're superior on the food chain. So we are smart enough to realize that we do not have to hunt animals or eat them. We have been um, growing and the animals are lessening. We are going on their territory. That is why they are eating the farmer's crops because there aren't any, because we're chopping down all of their crops and they don't have anything to eat. So I don't think that they should all just be shot because they're eating their food. Thank you, Mary. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Scott Swagger, and I'm from Gray, Maine, and I'm a sportsman. I pay a lot of money every year for hunting equipment, and a lot of that money goes to fish and wildlife programs, not only throughout the state of Maine, but throughout the country. And some of those fish and wildlife programs are designed uh, to protect the species. I really don't care if Cape Elizabeth has a bow hunt or not. You have a problem. We have been invited to come here through the open program that you people are thinking of doing. And I want to say again, I don't care if you have it or not. But the thing I don't like is people calling me cruel and inhumane. I think it's, it's a little out of hand. I think some of the people here tonight are opposed to hunting, period. And God bless America, that's the way it is. If you have an opinion, you state it, and people should honor that opinion. But don't call, don't call me cruel and humane. Statistics that I have show that bow hunting is no more cruel or inhumane than any other kind of hunting. The fact is, deer are most likely to survive a bow wound than any other kind. Thank you. I'm Bob McClellan. I'm not a hunter. I'm not a farmer. I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth. I have hunted. I have farmed. In the past 15 years, I've worked around Cape Elizabeth quite a bit. I have seen deer in Cape Elizabeth starve to death. I have seen deer in Cape Elizabeth that I have had to kill when they were hit by a car. I don't care if we have bow hunting. We've got to do something about controlling the number of deer in the Cape, where they are overpopulated. I live at the end of Jody Jordan's farm on the, on the ocean end. This morning, I took my wife to work at 7 o'clock, 7.30, I come back, there was a buck in my garden. I planted a garden last year. I never had more damage in my life from deer than I had last year. I debated whether I wanted to farm at all this year or plant a garden. I chose to. I have used the, the uh, soap, I've used the deterrents, I've used the repellents, I've used all these other things that these people have talked about tonight. They have not, well, I can't say they haven't worked. All I can say is that I still have an awful lot of damage. This buck was in my garden this morning at 7.30. I shooed him out of my garden, he went across my lawn and stopped and was eating my shrubbery. I shooed him out of there and he went over and he ate my apple tree. Now this is happening in Cape Elizabeth. We've got to do something about controlling the number of deer we have here. And I personally think that the bow hunt is just about as humane and as good for the people and the town as anything that I have seen anywhere. Thank you. Anyone else? We have about six minutes left. My name's Jill Mallory and I'm a resident of Cape Elizabeth. And I'm opposed to the hunting. I would like to see the council explore um, as much as possible other alternatives, um, particularly if um, this, there is a federal program that 
provides these electric fences, it seems to me that that ought to be explored a little bit more. Um, then the only other question I have is as to what areas of Cape Elizabeth there will be hunting allowed on. Um, I have children, <coughs> many of my friends have children. It seems to me that increasing the number of deer that are allowed to be killed per hunter increases the chances of a human being being hurt in the process as well. Um, and I would like to know what areas of the Cape will be hunted upon. Is there anyone else? Herbert Dennison, 63 Spoink Avenue. I'm not a hunter. I have hunted. I agree with a lot that's been said tonight. This town is overpopulated with deer. It is a good, humane way. I s urge the council not to beat around and drag it out with these federal programs that never come across. The last gentleman that spoke there, I think, laid it out pretty good. People stand up here tonight and tell the f how rich the farmers are with their means. You're getting into an emotional issue. And I think we have to deal with the facts. And, and, and the deer have increased. I've lived here all my life. They, I don't believe the houses have helped, but I don't think they've heard them. It's, you've got no means of, of curtailing them. You, you can't shoot them any longer when you used to be able to when I was a young fellow. And they got to eat somewhere, and they're eating everything, and you've got to do something. So to postpone it, stall it, drag it around, looking for federal aid, uh, you're just beating the bush in, in a lot of emotional feelings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dennison. My name is Harry Hardy. I have had surgery and I don't have the boys. Uh, I work outdoors in Cape Elizabeth and, and I don't care whether you do it by a, a bull hunt or whatever, but there's a serious problem and the herd needs to be reduced. And I think right now the bow hunt is the best alternative we have. And you know, and, and the council needs to take action, period. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, my name is Phil Bosnard. I'm a regional wildlife biologist. There's no question that this is an emotional issue, but I think if we get back to the issue that's before the council, uh, uh, involving whether the police department should be uh, part of this uh, activity. As has been stated earlier, this has been a cooperative effort between the landowners, Cape Elizabeth Police Department, Fish and Wildlife. There are several issues that have uh, come about. This is not a new problem. I've been active uh, with deer problems in the Cape since I started in 1973. Uh, there are current ongoing problem. Uh, depredation goes on annually. We issue depredation permits annually. We remove X number of deer annually, and there's no end to it. There's been a lot of things talked about, uh, electric fences, repellents. <coughs> Several years ago, uh, when we issued depredation permits, we said, why don't you try electric fences? See where nursery has done that. See where nursery has found out that they don't work in Cape Elizabeth due to the high deer numbers. They go inside the electric fence and still create damage. Uh, I think it's foolish for us to tell Ken Maxwell or Bill Jordan to fence 100 acres when see where nursery can't keep deer out of a five acre field. Uh, it just seems an inappropriate uh, expense of money right now. As in the past, the department has provided uh, half the cost of the fencing for orchards, nothing for agricultural crops. So if a landowner right now wants to do anything, he does it on his own. Some of the people that testified earlier are right. There is a federal program that's coming online that will provide electric fence. To date, that is not available. So if somebody wants to put up electric fence right now, they do it at their own expense. And as you can see from uh, discussions earlier, it's quite expensive to put up an electric fence. We have tried bow hunting in the past. Uh, it's always been legal in the Cape since you t took away the discharge of the firearm. We relaxed the restriction on the game preserve uh, five or six years ago. However, at that time, up to this date, you can only take one deer in the state of Maine. Uh, hunters are selective. They don't want to take a small deer, thereby not 
solving the problem by being selective and taking no deer. Basically, the only change that we've made is the addition of two extra deer, hoping that this will spur some hunters to take a deer when they see it. Uh, the only way we can see that this is going to provide any solution to the farmers' problems and the car deer accidents in the state in the Cape Elizabeth town is through deer reduction. We're going to have to lessen the deer population in the Cape. Uh, <clears throat> as was mentioned before, uh, $37,000 worth of crop damage. Uh, I think this is basically in seaward nurseries. Uh, $48,000 in property damage through car deer accidents. I don't think it takes uh, too much insight to realize that the Cape has a problem. And I would encourage the council to uh, <clears throat> actively encourage the police department's involvement in this activity. Uh, if any activities happen throughout this activity period, basically they're going to be trespass violations, which is not handled by the Fish and Game Department, but by local police organizations. And I would encourage your support for the police department. I'll take two more comments, if there are two. My name is Scott Riddle. I represent Seaward Nurseries. Um, over the last six years since I've been there, uh, we've done extensive fencing. Um, when you touch a fence, one of our fences today, it'll practically knock your shoes off. In the winter, when the deer have their thick winter coats, um, be like having a heavy pack on and brushing up against it. It just doesn't have the effect uh, during the winter months. Um, the police department has put a lot of time into this program already, and uh, we have no choice but to support them. They have worked hard on this. It's very well organized. Um, there are a lot of qualified hunters that are going to be assisting in this deprivation program. Um, I wouldn't really call it an organized hunt. It's a deprivation program. We, are, we as farmers are asking uh, these experienced bow hunters to come in and help us out. And uh, I just want to express my support for the program. Thank, Thank you. you. Good evening. My name is John Roberts, and I'm a resident of Fowler Road, just off uh, Great Pond, not in the area that you're targeting. I find myself in a strange position here tonight in that I am an, an extreme anti-hunter. I, I cannot believe people go out to uh, have sport by shooting animals. However, there is a problem in the town. The population does need to be reduced. I would prefer to see the animals trapped and released elsewhere, but I will support whatever action you need to take. Um, the measures to try to keep the animals out does not work. Uh, last night, the deer hopped my fence and the tomatoes. I'll give Rosemary a call. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> that was just last night. Um, we have a lot of animals in town. The deer, uh, we need to reduce them. Uh, I prefer an another method other than bow hunting, but if that's your choice, it has to be. Thank you. Thank you. Since the other person was brief, we will allow another comment. You know, I'm always brief. <laughs> I just come up here to say I'm Bill Jordan, and uh, I have one of those farms in Cape Elizabeth that's worth a million. <laughs> had an offer of a million. <laughs> <laughs> I had an offer of a million and a half five years ago, but nobody wants to look at me now. And I should have taken it. Uh, what I just wanted to say, I want to answer the lady's question that she wanted to know where the hunt was located, and it is. Uh, specifically located and it's mostly in the western section of Cape Elizabeth and it's in the wooded areas. There's going to be no bow hunting as far as this hunt goes out in open fields and around anybody's back door yard. That's one of the criteria that we have set up and we don't want people with bows running up and down the street for breasts like you see. This I feel is a reasonable way of going about this to have it well policed and well supervised and I think it's something that w should move forward and be tried out. And also I was glad to hear that uh, Phil Bosenhart straightened out as far as a fencing and everybody able to, uh, the farmers able to get all the federal bucks back. 
I was never able to see any and uh, for fencing and in the climb and I don't think Kenny Maxwell was able to get any either. So uh, you've got to look into these programs and get them spelled out to find out what is available. And a lot of times, vegetable farmers and are exempt from some of these other programs and vice versa. Thank you. One more, since we haven't got our full 30 minutes for each slide. I just, I've actually but missed the majority of what's been said. I just came, so if I'm adding anything, repeating anybody's uh, words, uh, forgive me. But uh, I happened to catch you it. Give us a oh, I'm sorry. I'm Vince Oliviero. I live in Cape Elizabeth. I apologize. Uh, I happened to catch a little bit of this on the TV. And uh, one of the things that sticks in my mind is the fact that one of the things that makes Cape Elizabeth what it is is the presence of the farms spread out throughout the community. And uh, one of the things I see most is the pressure the farms are under from the developers. I think uh, uh, farming in general is, has a problem from a financial standpoint. Everything that happens ha helps uh, towards the ultimate end of farming in Cape Elizabeth. And I do think that we should help in any way that we can possibly take the pressure off the farmers. The deer population as a given is uh, too big and uh, the numbers are well published. And I think that we should support a method of reducing the deer herd uh, for the benefit of the farmers and maintaining the community as it is. And uh, one gentleman I heard speak earlier said there are other ways. They cost money. Well, if they cost much more money, we can't really afford it, as we've seen with the recent <coughs> school budget and other problems we've had this year. So I think if the bow hunt is, has the potential of successfully reducing the herd, helping the farmers, preserving the flavor of the community, I think it should be supported. Thank, Thank you. you. I guess we'll have uh, Gunther Gower. I'm the manager of the Sprague Estate, Ram Island Farms, and I live in Cape Elizabeth also. I've lived here for 20 years, and I've seen a lot of changes in this town in 20 years. This morning at the, at the estate, we have 15 people living down there, and there was actually there was 18 people living there because three were deer on the front lawn. And the front lawn of the Sprague Estate is approximately 30 feet across from the ocean to the house. And you shoot a deer away and they don't go away. They just meander around. They go between the buildings and everything. I have, on the lawns, I have actual deer paths like you would find in the woods. On an estate where people are in the house living there and we cannot control the deer down there. And for the animal lovers, that's fine. but. They don't live in this town. They don't have to put up with the problems that we have to put up with. My mother-in-law last year. I'm sorry. My mother-in-law last year, who owns some land at Mr. Wack Maxwell Farms, she has shrubs around her house, and they were completely eaten by the deer. In fact, one night, she, she heard some noise, and she looked out the window. There was a deer eaten out of her bird feeder. Now, if that's not a problem, I don't know. Either the deer were not told that they shouldn't eat bird feed, but uh, that's some of the problems we have down the estate. And I have deer. I live on Sweet Fern, which is right off of Fowler, and I've seen deer amongst the houses there late at night or early in the morning. So deer or not, they, they can live around humans, and I think we've got a problem in this town, and I think we should take care of it. And since we're in a budget crisis, I think we should do what was suggested by the chief of police and some of the other farmers in this town and stuff to get rid of some of the deer. Okay, thank you, Mr. Either that or send them to Gardner or wherever. Thank you. Now, were there some questions that were posed tonight that Captain Tolson or Tolman or any of the people, I'm sorry, Tolman, um, or the people from the uh, Fish and Wildlife Department would like to clarify. <laughs> I, I didn't prepare any remarks. I'd be responsible <coughs> for the safety part of the hunt if, if the city accepts it. And the testing will be done by certified instructors from the International Bow Hunter Education Foundation in the state. And if it, you know, we'd, we'd try to make it as safe as possible, and if that couldn't be done, we would. I'd recommend the commissioner we wouldn't have it, but I don't have any 
I don't have any reservation. I'm sure it'll be conducted safely. All right. I'm going to close the public part of the hearing, and the counselors um, may ask questions of basically the professionals who are here. Um, perhaps a little more background. We should really focus on why we're here tonight. We're here tonight to see whether or not the town council will allow the Cape Elizabeth Police Department to supervise uh, a bow hunt on private property, basically property owned by large, um, mostly farmers or large um, property owners. These uh, particular hunting areas have always been designated in specific areas and people are assigned to areas, is that correct? And that these hunting um, periods have been going on for years. So whether or not we approve the supervision of the Cape Elizabeth Police Department, would this, would this hunt still go on? The bowl season would still go on, whether you approve this particular deprivation permit or not in the supervision of the police department. The regular bow hunting season would still exist, as in, it has for years Elizabeth, in Cape Elizabeth. As it has. Yes. Councilor Pearson, you had your hand up. Oh, no, I was just going to uh, <coughs> suggest that either one of the gentlemen from the state would just, as Captain Tolan just said, though, is one question that was brought up was where the hunt was going to take place, and I think that every hunter who's going to be assigned a certain stand at a certain location as uh, figured that's where the most likely track of deer is. Is that correct? So, I mean, we're looking at high percentage areas where the deer would pass. Yeah, the area where the hunt is going to take place. Perhaps you should come up to the microphone so everyone could hear. Thank you. Okay, the area we have targeted for uh, the hunt to take place in basically involves uh, several of the major landowners and they have expressed a desire as to how many hunters they would want on their property. Uh, in that means they have X number of areas that they feel can hold one hunter. If uh, Ram Island Farms feels that they can hold 20 hunters, they have 20 different areas, wooded areas, where one hunter would be placed in each area. And, you know, they would be restricted to that area. They could build a stand within that area and where they wanted. I just, I just wanted to answer. I know that that was brought up by someone that was concerned about the safety. They're not going to be roaming around and track a deer into your backyard and shoot. Okay, they're going to be in designated areas. Another thing to know about deer, uh, I'll just let you know, since this wasn't the issue, we're just here to decide basically whether the police department can help or assist the state in this program. That I'm sorry. It's I'm sorry. All Captain Captain Tolan spoke this evening and he read the copy that said that the police department is asking permission to assist a state program. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you are out of order. Um, this is the public part of the hearing has been closed that um, the I issue that has not been decided is whether or not the town will allow the police department to supervise the hunt. And that, that is the whole issue tonight. Councilor Pearson, did you have another question you wanted to ask? No, I was, ju I was just going to say this also concerned the safety issue. Um, I got these two wonderful books from the Cape Elizabeth Town Library. One is from a a photographer who tracks deer and has for several years. This book was written quite a while ago, 28 years ago. But I don't think deer's habits have changed. And one of the things that they did say is that deer are generally a localized uh, breed or, or animal, if you will, and they will stay in an area approximately one square mile. So the Sprague Estate, which I believe is 1,800 acres, which I don't even know how many square miles that is, uh, but all of Cape Elizabeth is 17 square miles, so essentially you could have 17 areas where deer would still roam, so that they wouldn't, if you drove along Shore Road, you can still see deer crossing over. No one's going to hunt deer over there. You could still go down certain areas over uh, right here on Ocean House Road. I, my in-laws used to live down here, and the deer would always be in the orchard. Those deer will still be there. It's not a hunt that's going to go and just take all the deer and you're never going to see another deer again in your life. 
And I think, you know, I, I don't want to make this a, a platform, which that wasn't the intention of this public hearing, but at a public hearing we do listen to everyone's views and, and we respect your opinions. Um, that's not the issue, but I think that everyone's got to realize that I'd love to read this. Is that appropriate to just read this? Everyone yeah. else did. Well, we've this given is, other people three minutes, Carl. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is, once again, this was written in 1972. It's straight from the book. It's not expressing one side. I'm not going to sit on the fence. I, that's very uncomfortable, I think. But it is impossible to, to discuss deer without discussing deer management because there is scarcely a deer alive in America today that is not directly influenced by man. Man controls the water the deer drinks, the food that it eats, the land that it lives on, and he regulates the manner, season, and sex of the deer harvested. And harvest the deer he must because they have become a crop of the land in the same sense of the food we eat. That man, in his faltering way, does not always manage the deer crop in the best manner, can readily be seen by the problems confronting many states. It is exceedingly difficult to estimate just how many deer there were in what is now the United States before the coming of the white man. Deer thrive best on cut over forest lands, and because most of our good present day deer country was still in virgin timber, there were much smaller numbers of deer 200 years ago than we are accustomed to see today. The United States Fish and Wildlife Service, using the most up-to-date census methods, estimates our present white-tailed deer population in this country at more than 5 million animals. As the <coughs> early settlers cut down the forest and deer food increased, deer population began to rise. In order to protect this cattle, his cattle, horses and sheep, the settler waged increasing war on the larger predators, which also protected deer. As the deer increased, they moved into settlers' land and ate his crops. Deer damage to crops goes back to the earliest record of farm crops in this country. The settlers hunted deer for food, and deer hides became a standard item of barter. Then large-scale lumbering in the 1800s caused the deer population to skyrocket. This also ushered in the day of the market hun hunters, whose heavy toll of deer caused the population to plummet downward. Uncontrolled forest fires wiping out millions of acres of deer food also reduced herds. Much of the early tree and shrub growth, which followed the heavy lumbering, soon grew out of the deer's reach. Together, these factors combined to produce an all-time low in the deer population at the turn of the century. Although some laws have been passed to protect deer, many people now clamored for better laws, more rigidly enforced. Slowly but surely, the pendulum reversed its swing, and the deer population began an accelerating rise. A deer today is its own worst enemy. They have so increased that in many areas they suffer annually from chronic starvation. Bucks only laws passed years ago to help in reestablishing the dwindling deer herds now work against the deer by resulting in an overabundance of does which can't legally be killed. Many hunters not clearly understanding which can't the situation. Am I over my three minutes? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, the bottom, the bottom line of this paragraph. Uh, I believe that more attention should be given to the staffing of the various state game commissions by trained and experienced wildlife technicians instead of political appointees. These commissions should then be allowed to operate unhampered by various pressure groups, composed oftentimes of sportsmen, farmers, animal rights activists. These commissions would be aware that if they do not pursue the wisest management costs, they will have no game to manage and thus no jobs. Thank you, Councilor Pinson. Right. Thanks. And there you come, Councilor Reed. That's good reading. Yes. <laughs> Madam Chairman, I would like to have um, Captain Tolan please help me for a moment. It's my understanding that the depredation permit expan expansion program is designed to reduce the health hazard in Cape Elizabeth, address the safety issue present in Cape Elizabeth due to overpopulation of the white-tailed deer. Is that true? It's true. So we are not uh, just worried about helping the farmers, is that correct? No, it's everything that we've spoken about tonight. It's designed to assist. That the goal of the program is to strengthen the remaining herd? to limit the property damage to vehicles, property, prevent bodily injury to motor vehicles, motorcycles, operators, and bicycle operators within our boundaries, preventing Correct. damage. Correct. We are to uh, stop the suffering of injured deer who caused these accidents or are involved in these accidents. Is that correct? Correct. Has there been an identified infestation of the deer tick causing Lyme disease in Cape Elizabeth? You'd have to talk to uh Yes. Yes, there, there has. <coughs> Thank you very much. Councillor Krillman. Captain, the, uh, the data we have tonight, at least the, uh, the most solid data we have, uh, in my impression, 
comes from 1979. Is that correct, 11 year old data? Do we have anything more recent in terms of the uh, specifics of exactly how many deer are in the Cape? No, I don't believe so. I'm still confused about how bas basically this issue got on our agenda. Um, back and forth, it sounds like the, the Cape Elizabeth Police Department has asked the state uh, to assist in this process. Is that basically how it went, or has the state initiated this, this ball? I'm confused. I think it's a joint issue between the landowners and the police department involved with the state. So we came to you? I mean, you, you have been discussing whether or not a town um, body would be involved in supervising something like this. <coughs> but hasn't that been an ongoing program of sorts anyway? Yes, it has. Unsuccessfully. The first time I met with town Um, we've asked one of our counselors to, to step down because at least um, an appearance of a conflict of interest here. Uh, can I ask uh, how many uh, police officers are archers I would in, in Cape Elizabeth? This is actively two. Two out of like 13 out of or so? 12 uh, full timers is two. Okay. Myself, I am not. I don't hunt. Mm -hmm. And can you answer me now? It's not completely clear from the uh, proposed program uh, whether or not we're going to be authorizing uh, succinyl choline potted arrows with uh, paralyzing agents in them. Is that an issue here? You're talking to the wrong person. I do not <laughs> hunt, and I have no idea. Maybe one of the uh, gentlemen from Fish and Wildlife could tell you that. Uh, could you respond to that? Yeah, the, some of the arrows are uh, succinyl, choline-tipped arrows that paralyze the deer uh, once the uh, arrow penetrates the animal. Are they going to be authorized in this hunt or no? Are all the rules and regulations, this is last year's, of hunting regulations for the state of Maine. These are the rules that have to be followed. There are no exceptions other than the limit of deer. For the special deer hunt in Cape Elizabeth, all of the main state um, regulations for hunting will be followed except for the limit being increased? Yes, that's correct. We've specified that the arrows be the same size, that the ball have the same capability. The only difference that I see to this day is that the, it's being on I just had two more clarifications and then I'll, I'll wrap up my thoughts here. Uh, in the press, there's a statement that basically what the council is going to do tonight uh, is going to determine whether the police department will help uh, control the hunt. And then in another place, it says that the hunt won't happen unless the council approves it. Now, I'm still a little confused about actually what's going to happen tonight and uh, I don't want to remain confused too much longer because I'm going to have to vote. If the town council does not authorize the police department uh, this evening to assist in, in this particular six-page uh, hunt that you have uh, well uh, drafted uh, up to the fourth time here, it still is possible and probable that there will be archers roaming around Cape Elizabeth between October 1st and December 1st hunting deer. Is, is that correct? Correct. Very definitely there will be. Especially with this publicity, correct. one way or another. Correct. The point is they will only, though, be allowed 
to take one deer at the maximum correct if we did approve this uh, program tonight they actually could take four isn't that correct uh, yes three plus the one from the three state one, one for the whole pie. season and is it your contention that basically the problem last year in that only 15 deer were killed in Cape Elizabeth stems from the business of the archer seeing an animal but feeling that that particular animal might not be the, the best trophy he or she could bag that particular season so that they would not fire and wait for a bigger? I think selectivity leads to a reduction in the number of deer taken. Okay. Thank you. Those are the only questions I had. Questions? Councilman McLaughlin. Yes, please. Mr. Bosnart, would you go to the microphone, please? The problem is if you don't answer from the mic, people watching on television can't hear you. I'm going to follow up on Councilor Krillsman's question because I've had the same confusion. I think people in the audience this evening have had a confusion. I need to know if the council does not approve the Cape Elizabeth Police Department's involvement in this three deer per permit hunt. Will that kind of hunt still happen? Three deer per limit? No. Mm -hmm. No. Okay because that is not the way, that wasn't my understanding last month, and I must have misinterpreted well, some of what I heard. Can I ask you a question? What was your understanding? My understanding was that the state would conduct that kind of hunt even if the police department was not participating. What you'll have is, as you've had the in the regular. past, probably an expanded archery season run by the landowners without the proficiency test, one deer per limit. Okay, I thank you, sir. Uh, don't, don't sit down. <laughs> you, um, you said that you, did, you didn't have any more up-to-date figures than the 1979 figures. I'm surprised at that because I know the state has identified deer yards mm -hmm. throughout the state, and spe specifically in Cape Elizabeth. So I know there's been some kind of studying going on. Do you have any kind of ballpark figure for how many deer per acre we're experiencing now? I give you an overall population estimate, probably two to three hundred deer right now. Two to three hundred in Cape Elizabeth? Yeah. And yes, we have identified deer yards, i.e. critical habitat for deer. We have not identified population levels in every town in the state. Okay. Um. As I said before, this is a problem that's been ongoing for 15 years. Rather than try to inventory the deer population every year with the thought that maybe we might do something, it's certainly a waste of time. Okay. Even though I might have been prepared. <laughs> okay. Um, looking at all my questions here. I think those are the ones for you. Thank you. Um, Mr. Tolan, what kind of consideration, if any, has been given to using sharpshooters rather than bow hunters for this kind of program? Sharpshooters as in rifles? Rifles, I'm sorry, yes. I don't believe there's any given because uh, of the town ordinances stressing the fact there's no uh, discharge of firearm. Okay. Um, what kind of enforcement action would there need to be if a wounded deer goes outside the property of the property owner where the hunt is permitted? I don't understand your question by enforcement. Okay. What do you mean by enforcement? Um, what's going to happen if Mr. Smith lives next to the Sprague estate? There is no hunting on Mr. Smith's land. A deer that is hit by an arrow wanders onto Mr. Smith's land and has to be k killed. The final kill has to be done there. If you're talking about with the police department, is that is that going to happen? What? Well, we're stressing. Can Mr. Fact, Smith do? We're stressing the fact in the program <laughs> that if a hunter does shoot a deer, they follow the deer and do, you know, humanely as possible, uh, take care of the problem because of the fact that if the deer wander off and they go onto somebody's property, you just, you can't leave it there to suffer. So we're stressing in the program that we set up that the hunters will not just allow the deer, if they wound them, to run off. They will take all means possible to track that deer. Okay, and I think we may, there's an outside chance that we may have deer crossing the municipal lines and going into Scarborough or South Portland. It happens now with okay. the bow season. Just so people are aware that this 
I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I think it is a possibility, knowing my other hat, you know, it's been discussed. <laughs> um, what number of, it's probably in here, and I've, I'm just missing it right now. Okay, I see 31 car deer accidents in 89. How many car deer accidents have there been in 90? Do you have a figure for that today? I figures with me tonight. I probably okay. should have, but I don't. All right. It's uh, the majority of the car deer accidents are in the fall uh, mm -hmm. when they're rolling. We have, uh, if I could just speak to that for a moment, uh, probably at least 50% of the car deer accidents, I can speak from actual being there, the officers have to discharge their weapons to dispose of the deer. The deer are not, the majority of them are not killed at the time of the accident. They've had officers have to go into the woods to track the deer to dispose of it because it's so badly injured. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the problems with the car deer accident. Okay, thank you. Um, I stated last month, and I will say again, that although Bambi is my all-time favorite movie, my children are mortified to hear me say that in public, I also grew up in a family of hunters, and I eat beef, I eat seafood, and I eat venison. I agree that we need to reduce the deer population in Cape Elizabeth. It has grown to become a problem. As often happens in a council decision, we have to look for a balance. We have to look this evening, I believe, for the balance between the deer population, what's best for the citizens, and what's best for our farmers. We get a, we're accused of giving a lot of lip service to the farmers in this town and saying how much we appreciate living in a community where there is the rural activity of farming. I think this provides us, provides me anyway, for an opportunity to show support for those farmers and for, to help them with a problem that severely impacts them. It impacts some of the minor landowners as well, as you've heard from some of the people speaking here tonight. I don't know a lot about bow hunting. I would rather have a deer killed by a bow and arrow than have it hit by a car and suffer that way and traumatize the occupants of that car or to have it starve to death. And I've seen pictures of those starving deer. They remind me of the pictures of the children in Bangladesh. I don't like that either. So I'm going to be in favor of this proposal. Councillor Amaro. Uh, I'd like to add to what uh, Councillor McLaughlin has just said. Uh, she said that we have to be concerned uh, about the citizens, of the total citizenry of Cape Elizabeth, that we also have to be concerned about the farmers. I'd like to add that we also have to be concerned about the herd of deer in this community. And because of all three of those uh, concerns, I feel it is very important to manage the deer herd. Uh, I think it's extremely humane to manage wildlife. Uh, we are not planning to eliminate the deer herd. We're talking about a management program that uh, would eliminate 75 to 100 deer from the herd. Um, it may have to be an annual program, as uh, uh, the lady from Gardner stated earlier. Uh, that, that remains to be seen. Uh, personally, uh, I have always planted a garden since I've lived in Cape Elizabeth. My property abuts one of our commercial farmers, and we've always had to plant about three times what our needs were. Uh, but even at doing that, uh, I have to go over to uh, uh, my neighbor's commercial farm and buy my vegetables now because the tomato that was passed around here earlier this evening by John Roberts is what all of my tomato, squash, cucumbers, and everything else looks like this year. Uh, I, we do have a problem in Cape Elizabeth, there's no question. We have to be concerned about the sa safety to our citizens. We have to be concerned about the health of the herd. Uh, and we have to allow farmers to make a living in this community. That's part of our tradition. Uh, and so for all of those reasons, I am prepared to make a motion uh, to authorize the Cape Elizabeth Police Department to assist the state in the management of the deer herd in this community. Second. Discussion? Since everyone else has basically had a chance to um, express their um, feelings on the issue, I would also like to express mine. 
Um, I too feel that we need to be concerned for everyone in the town, the residents, the farmers, and the deer. But I also think as being town council, we also have to um, consider another aspect of this program, one of which is financial. We need to determine um, how much the town is going to subsidize um, a program like this, because by using our police officers um, to screen and to supervise the hunt, that we are also paying them their usual salaries. I would like to see the amendment, um, an amendment made to the motion that a fee be charged for all those hunters who were taking the proficiency test. This fee would be used to help defray some of the expenses of the program and overseeing the program. I feel that even though the program benefits everyone in Cape Elizabeth, it also benefits primarily the farmers and that we should give serious thought to trying to make this financially self-supporting. And that it also would be reevaluated after one year. Councilor Creeman, you have a comment? Yeah, I, I suspect uh, I'm in the minority tonight. Uh, I, uh, it sounds like we have to reduce the herd. That, that sounds pretty clear to me. And uh, I think it's unfortunate that it becomes this yearly issue of uh, you know, the farmers sort of, you know, versus the others. I, I always hate to be um, in that situation because uh, the last thing uh, um, I want to be identified with is uh, sort of anti-farming. But at the same time, I'm, I'm disappointed that the, the whole issue has come to the council uh, almost uh, as a foregone conclusion that uh, that this is the way that we're going to reduce the herd. Um, I mean, this officially has come to us. We, we really have not debated other techniques. Uh, you know, I think of uh, Julian Coles <coughs> using his uh, moving vans to take caribou uh, up north. Uh, you know, it just seems to me that Cape Elizabeth is a very uh, intelligent community. Uh, there are a lot of IQ points here. It seems in some way we ought to be able to catch or trap or some way uh, get these deer uh, out of the town uh, in a more acceptable area uh, for the sport of bow hunting. I'm concerned about the precedent that Cape Elizabeth is going to set uh, for the state. Uh, I'm concerned about the publicity that the uh, issue has already uh, received. Uh, as a psychiatrist, I'm just a little bit concerned about the safety value in arrows flying around, uh, but that's not a big one. But I, I'm not going to be able to vote for this because I just think that it's, a, it's been a foregone conclusion that this simply is the best way to do it. I'm very unhappy with data that is 11 years old, uh, and I really wish that we had uh, had other options and really had the opportunity to weigh them in a, a better thought out fashion than uh, just having this as the bottom line. Councilor Reed. Madam Chairman, do you need a second on your amendment? Did you make an amended motion? I suggested that it be made. I wanted to see whether or not Councilor Amaro would be willing to amend her motion. I guess I'd like to hear from uh, the people in the, uh, representing the state whether that's possible. Yeah, there have been several discussions about landowner charging a fee, as some landowners have in the past. Uh, the state has gone on record to not support charging a fee. You don't want this uh, paying type of event. It's a deprivation permit for trying to reduce the population. Uh, now that I have the world of it, would you like to go to the microphone, please, so we all can share your <laughs> message? Throughout the evening, there have been many references to alternative methods uh, trapping deer. If the council is concerned about paying the police department, would they also like to consider funding a trapping effort? Uh, the state is not prepared to do that. Again, we tried 75, 76 to trap deer when deer populations were high. Uh, we trapped for approximately two months and got eight. It's not a very efficient way of moving deer. It's very costly. Uh, the cost of the police department's involvement would be minimal compared to trying 
alternative methods? The fee I basically had in mind was not a fee that would be paid to the landowners. It would be paid to the town for its use of its facilities and staff. I addressed our discussions we had in coming up with a proposal before you. Uh, <clears throat> I guess basically I wouldn't have a, any problem with a nominal fee. Would you like to suggest a fee? <laughs> I'll give you my answer. That, um, I mean, you're leaving it wide open when you say, <laughs> we'll have a fee. Right, a fee that would defray this, the expenses. So basically, it would cost the town nothing. It would it be $30 per 120 hunters who were selected, or per I, 30? I think that's fairly high. $25 is high? I think so, for what the town's involvement is going to be. I don't think there's going to be much involvement outside of routine patrols. If I could address you, the chief and I talked about this, and uh, we feel the majority of the expense will be in the mailing, which will be notifying people that they were selected. Uh, the issue of the officers maintaining control of the hunt will be the officers that are on routine patrol. They're being paid to be out there doing that job anyways. Uh, the other issues of the computers being used at the, <coughs> time, the police station, the dispatchers have entered all the information in the computers. That's already been done. Uh, the lottery being selected. Uh, will be being done while people are on duty. Obviously, there's a minimal cost because they're being taken away from other duties at that particular time. But the majority of the enforcement is going to be done in the office's routine course of events. Uh, so the majority of our funding right now is going to be mailing. Okay. I would like to add that basically you're going to have an archery system in place in the Cape anyways, and your officers are going to be responding to uh, hunting calls whether this program goes into effect or not. So every cost of this program is not going to be additional to what the police department is paying right now. The Fish and Game Department has already uh, found the instructors to do the examining. We've already purchased the targets. And the bow hunters bring their own equipment. So I can't imagine that the town of Cape Elizabeth is, will have to spend very much money. So far, uh, they've paid for the mailing and we've paid for all the materials. Okay. Councillor Amaro. What is the cost of a license for bow hunting? 17, just 17, I think. I always buy a combination license. I believe it's 17 dollars. Our former town clerk said it's 16. Straight on the back page. Yes, on the back page. I guess I, I don't, I, I really uh, am not prepared to add that amendment to my motion, but if somebody else wants to, it's their prerogative. Madam Chairman, I have a question to the town Council manager. Clark. What kind, if any, what kind of legal fees either have been or might we expect to be incurred with this? in drawing up any documentation? I, I would guess so far we probably have invested a quarter of an hour of legal fees, uh, legal time, approximately $25. Okay. Thank you. The educational process and the testing process is, is insured by my department, $300,000 liability, $50,000 damage. Thank you, Mr. Anderson. Well, it appears that there is not going to be any major expense if the town department does administer this program. However, I'd like to have a very close tab kept on all the expenses, um, how much time officers have to spend other than their usual routine, and they're called for special. Um, reports. Um, <coughs> if there's no one who wants to make this amendment to Mrs. Amro's um, motion, then we'll move, move the motion and we'll take a roll call vote. Chairman Cogsaw? Yes. Councillor Amro? Yes. Councillor Creelman? No. Councillor McLaughlin? Yes. Councillor Pearson? Yes. Councillor Reed? Yes. 
for the motion. A motion. Five. It's, it's five. Five. It's five one. The motion is carried. The Cape Elizabeth Police Department will supervise the bow hunting season in Cape Elizabeth for this year. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to take a five-minute break, please. <coughs>